I've been a bang in my head against a brick wall all day. What's left of my soul is slowly wasting away. But I ain't gonna die here alone in the gloom. I'm gonna start a revolution in an empty room. I'm gonna sing out to la la yeah, to la la. -lay. For my best foot forward, brother, come what may. There may be only me and my shadow in the light of the moon. But I can start a revolution in an empty room. Watch me go now. But it don't mean nothing Unless you shout it out loud To far corners of silence Or the cries of the crowd You see we know something's wrong here And yet we all just assume We can't start a revolution In an empty room But we're wrong now To rely lie to la la For your best foot forward, brother, come what may There may be only you and your shadow In the light of the moon But you can start a revolution In an empty room In an empty room In an empty room I ain't gonna sit and wait away in the glow of an empty room Oh, of an empty room I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna Nom, 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 nom Forward, brother, come what may There may be only you and your shadow But now there's me and mine too And we can start a revolution in an empty room Hi everyone, Dave here. Uh, welcome again to our Sunday service. Just want to give you a couple of notices and just to ask you to keep praying for the projects that we've got in mind. The Accessible Labyrinth project and our book. Um, and if you feel you can help with either of these projects, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Uh, I'm sure you all want to know about the guy sitting behind me and who he is, but uh, I'm sorry, we just uh, we just don't talk about him. Anyway, sit back, relax, make yourself comfortable. If you need to pause this video for a while while you get a drink or 
light a candle or whatever it is that you do that makes you feel settled, please do that. And then let us begin. God, we come before you today with much to lay down and much to ponder. We have seen such violence, yet such love. We have seen such discrimination, yet the start of real resistance. We have seen such fear in the face of restrictions lifting, whilst others rejoice. Holy Spirit, we welcome you into the heart of everything we are feeling. Move us in the direction Jesus would move. Direct us to walk the steps Jesus would walk. Guide us in the actions Jesus would have us take. Above all, loving God, help us to keep our eyes on you so we may always know your peace. Amen. Welcome again to this sacred place, this holy ground, as real to us as any church building. Our home is here on YouTube, on Twitter, on Facebook, and on our website. Online is where we live and have our being. These are places of welcome open to all. Stay for as little or as long as you like. Be as involved or not as you feel comfortable being. Many of us that gather here were unable to access physical church even before there was a pandemic, and here we have been made welcome and found a home. This is our space. Come on in and join us. We dedicate this space to those who may feel they have little to look forward to, to those who feel they have nothing to contribute to those who have been made to feel unworthy and today, especially to those who worry about the, what the future of church or their faith may look like for them. Father, take this place and those gathered here and make this a place of hope and encouragement a place of refuge, a place of peace. To those who are new here, we say welcome. To those who are excited to be here, we say welcome. To those who don't know why they are here at all, we say welcome. To those who seeking led them here, we say welcome. To those who feel like they've always been here, we say welcome. To those who faced discrimination, fear and abuse, we stand with you against such things and we say welcome. To those who dare to hope and for those who dare not hope yet, you too are welcome. And to those who join us at a later time or date, you also are welcome. Above all, Jesus, we welcome you into our presence. This is your temple, Lord. Although there are no walls, the web is where we gather, as real to us as any church building. Computers, phones and tablets are our prayer books. Our prayers float in the ether, like incense across the sanctuary. 
Fellowship comes in many forms and ours is here online. Let us take a few moments to consider the times when we have not acted as we would have liked this week. For the times we have not worn a mask when we could have, or kept our social distance, we say, God, forgive us. For the times we have not been able to keep our manners or our tempers, we say, God, forgive us. For the times we have not been able to understand or seek understanding, we say, God, forgive us. For the times we have not recognised or challenged our inherent prejudices, we say, God, forgive us. For the times we have not done as much as we could have to support our neighbours and communities, we say, God, forgive us. For the times we have not cared for ourselves in the midst of this pandemic as well as we could have, we say, God, forgive us. In asking your forgiveness, gracious God, help us to be transformed, that we might live as people of your kingdom, following your way and trusting your wise counsel. Unite us with those who stare through the window longing to be allowed in, Unite us with those alone in their grief. Open our hearts, Lord, to the warmth of your love. Amen.
God, as we listen to your call to oppose injustice, challenge oppression and stand for what is just, we take a moment to give thanks for the things that keep us going in our times of need. For this space where we can express our emotions in safety, we thank you. For a service we are able to attend easily, we thank you. For friends amidst the darkness, we thank you. For people you understand, we thank you. For a place where we feel safe, we thank you. God of light, a light that breaks through the darkness, a light that penetrates all hidden corners, at light, a light that came to us through a little child born in Bethlehem. We have followed your star and it has brought us here. May we continue to diligently search for him each day so, so that we may offer our lives to you in joy and thanksgiving. Teach us a new song, Lord, a song for those who go unsung. Praise the ones that do our dirty work. The pushers of chairs, the wipers of bums, the makers of tea, the givers of medication. Teach us that new song, Lord, and that the new song, Lord, that lets them know they are loved. The ones who put their own dreams on hold, Lord, that, that give until they are spent. The ones who go unnoticed, Lord, quietly meeting our needs, yet keep us rolling along. Teach us to say thank you, Lord, for every ounce of care. God, let us now bring before you those who, those we know of who are in need of you at this time. In a moment of silence, we hold them before you and ask you for your blessing on their lives. Those who cannot see, he walks with as a guide. He whispers softly to those who cannot hear. He soothes those whose minds are troubled. He rides with those who cannot walk. He sees the pain of those whose pain cannot be seen and brings insight to those who appear not to understand. God of hope, Bring us love that dwells between us. God of hope, who brought peace into this world, be the peace that dwells between us. God of hope, who brought joy into this world, be that joys, be the joy that dwells between you. Though we are far apart, let us feel a closeness. Let us reach out across the ether. Unite us across time and space. Teach us to be alone yet together. Though we are socially distant and in isolation, let us feel your touch. The warmth of your love enfolding us. Hello, and peace be with you in a week where it hasn't felt very peaceful for many of us, I'm sure. It's been difficult to escape the conversations this week around race and Black Lives Matter, especially in light of what happened with the football. Many of us may have sat and watched the match. I certainly did. I'm not a football fan. But I sat with my children and watched the match as it seemed a really momentous thing to invite them into. We enjoyed it. I may even have shouted at the television a little. But it was really, really sad to see those three young men who stood 
for their country and did their job and did the best they could do, torn down, not because of their performance, but because of the colour of their skin and where their ancestors had come from, not them. Was it shocking though? Well, no. When I was a little girl, I had two dolls, Cherry and Lindy. One was a normal, soft-bodied, hard-limbed, hard-headed, pale-skinned doll, the type that you see on the shelves all over toy shops. The other was the same, apart from its tone was dark. My mother talks about having to search the world for this doll because I insisted that I should have two and that one should be light and one should be dark because that was what I saw in the world around me. I still look at the shelves for my children today and see the lighter toned dolls are the normal and different toned skinned dolls or not. Yes, there have been some progress. My little girl uses Lego Friends dolls and there are different skin tones in those ranges, but it's not enough. There is not enough diversity and not enough representation. And while there is not enough, and while it is not normalized, things will not change. It is not enough for people with light toned skin who enjoy the privilege that that naturally brings because of the history of our planet, which is undeniable and supported by the church to say we are not racist. We have to be anti-racist. We have to lay ourselves open and listen to our brothers and sisters from different countries, different ethnicities, different backgrounds. We have to hear what they have to say. And if they are telling us what they need is the Black Lives Matter movement, is for people to be alongside them as they take the knee is for people to respect their need for silent protest, for organised movements for change, then instead of protesting, this isn't necessary, we don't need this, this is just political posturing, what's it all about? We should stop, check our privilege and listen because that is what they need us to do. And more than that, that is what we need. A diverse society does not just meet the needs of one set of people. It meets the needs of all of us. I remember again, being a little bit older, but still a young girl and discovering Aretha Franklin and wishing, just wishing, that I could have been born like her. That I could have been born so naturally gifted with a voice like that, with a soul like that. And I naturally equated that with having darker skin. I wanted that. I coveted that. There is so much to be found in a multicultural society where we value what each other bring into that mix. 
instead of being scared of difference, instead of being concerned about what that might bring and what challenges we may face. As a church and as a Western society, we have been a major part of the problem. The British Empire went around colonising all of these countries, placing ourselves in a superior position, putting whiteness in a position of superiority. We have a responsibility to dismantle that. In day-to-day -day actions, if we see racism, we have a responsibility to call it out, to teach our children better. To say, actually, I'm going to report that tweet because that is not right. I'm going to send a message of support to that young man because, yay, yeah, Mr. Goal, we all miss things in life. That does not mean that he should be being subjected to that abuse because of the colour of his skin. I wonder whether the fact those three young men knew they were laying themselves open to such racist abuse contributed to the fact that those three young men missed those goals, although two of them were saved. The outpouring of support has been phenomenal. And I am so encouraged by the fact that despite the racism and despite the criticism and despite the abuse, the love and support has vastly outweighed that. And I hope we can all be encouraged and see that perhaps the tide is starting to turn. We here at the Ordinary Office want to actively be part of that tide turning and we want to encourage you to also be actively part of that tide turning. So please, educate yourselves. There's so many resources out there. Ghost Ship is an excellent book talking about racism within the Church of England. Native is an excellent book. Why I No Longer Talk to White People About Race is an excellent book. There is so much discourse on Twitter. It's not difficult to find why the Black Lives Matter movement is so important. We could have asked somebody different to speak today, but I as a white woman wanted to say this to the community, that we as white people have the responsibility to stand up for our brothers and sisters of different ethnicities. It is our culture and our communities that placed ourselves on that pedestal. It is up to us to own that and to reach our hands out and to support others up instead of contributing to the systemic failures that continue to hold them down. Because in holding other people down, we hold everybody down. And Jesus came to raise up the oppressed, not to perpetuate the systems that oppress. In our Bible reading we heard about at the end of times, when we will all stand together Whatever ethnicity, whatever culture, wherever we're from, however we look. And praise God together in beautiful harmony. I don't know if I believe in heaven as an after party. 
I kind of like the idea of bringing heaven on earth now. I'd quite like to start celebrating God, Jesus, the Spirit, with my brothers and sisters of different ethnicities, cultures, the way they look, the way they sound, here and now. Would you care to join me?
know. That's a crazy boy. Change, 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 change. I'm not talking about pocket change. Change is gonna <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Clarence Baker and Bill Bailey Fire! Even as you face injustice, know that God is just. Even as you face unfairness, know that God is fair. Even as you face discrimination, know that God does not discriminate. For Jesus walked with the poor, the weak, the oppressed, the exiled, and he walks with you today. And may the peace that comes with the knowledge of that love reside with you today and always by the spirit left with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Go in peace, go in kindness, go in love, go in faith, leave the day, day behind us. Day is done, go in grace. Let us go into the dark, not afraid, not alone. Let us hope by some good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Let's get together and 
Sibe mu 